sleep. We all need it, but people with MS and chronic illness really need it. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the importance of sleep for our brains and central nervous systems and share my top five tips to getting a good night's sleep. Hello, my dear friends, and welcome. My name is Vicki Hatch, and this is Even So It Is Well. On this channel, I share information on living well with MS and chronic illness. I recently have been looking into the importance of sleep and have found some fascinating information. Everyone needs good sleep, but for those of us with wonky immune systems, it's critically important. I recently read a book by Matthew Walker called Why We Sleep, and I'll put a link to it in the description below if you would like to check it out. Did you know that when we don't get enough sleep, it interferes with our ability to make new memories and process information? Yup, our brains can't consolidate information and commit new experiences to memory without good sleep. Cog fog or cognitive fog is a big deal to people with MS. It's one of the biggest reasons cited for leaving the workforce. Part of cog fog is not being able to remember things. I know there's times when I think to myself, did I send that email? Did I update that table? Did I actually create that document that I needed to create? When we don't sleep, our cognitive function suffers. Our attention is poor, our ability to recall things, and our emotional processing is also impacted. Think about it. When children don't get naps, they get cranky. Turns out when we don't get our sleep, we get cranky too. Did you also know that when we sleep, our bodies clean our brain's house? Yup, there are toxic proteins called beta amyloids that get cleaned out when we sleep. When we're sleeping, our brains get bathed with cerebrospinal fluid or CFS. This bath cleans out the garbage and the gunk. And when we're not getting enough sleep, this toxic protein can build up and increases our risk for dementia and Alzheimer's. Yikes. So make sure you're bathing your brain every night with good quality and quantity sleep. Lack of sleep also impacts our immune system. After just one night of four to five hours of sleep, there's a 70% reduction of immune cells called natural killer cells. And what do natural killer cells do for MS patients? I'm glad you asked. In this review, they found that MS risk factors and natural killer cells seem intrinsically linked and that MS therapies may influence natural killer cell efficacy. This lack of natural killer cells can also increase our risk of a number of different cancers, including cancer of the bowel, prostate, and breast. The evidence is so strong, the World Health Organization has classified nighttime shift work as a probable carcinogen. Lack of sleep may also cause inflammation. The theory is that during sleep, blood pressure drops and blood vessels relax. When sleep is restricted, blood pressure doesn't decline as it should, which could trigger cells and blood vessel walls that, to activate inflammation. And you know, as people with MS, we are more at risk to developing comorbid conditions, right? You knew that, right? We're more likely to develop cancers, heart disease, and other autoimmune diseases. Sleep also reboots our cardiovascular systems. Our blood pressure goes down and our heart rate drops when we sleep. If we consistently get six hours of sleep or less, it increases our risk of having a fatal heart attack or stroke in our lifetime by up to 200%. In fact, during daylight saving time, you know, when we change the clocks in the spring and we lose an hour of sleep, there is a 24% increase in heart attacks the following day. And in the fall, when we get an extra hour of sleep, there's a 21% less heart attack rate the next day. That's crazy. And according to Walker, once we get past 16 hours of being awake, we start to see mental deterioration and physiological deterioration of the body. And when we've been awake for 19 to 20 hours, we become so impaired, it's like we're legally drunk. He said that wakefulness is essentially low level brain damage brain damage. And of course, there's the connection to fatigue. Fatigue is the other top reason that people with MS leave the workforce. 
when we're not getting enough quality sleep, our fatigue increases as well. Okay, so what can we do to improve our sleep? There are five tips that I'd like to share with you to help to improve your sleep. Have a regular bedtime. Plan to be in bed for a minimum of eight hours. I try to go to bed at 10 p.m. each night and hope to stay asleep until at least six. Having a regular bedtime every night is a good habit to get into. Keep it cool. It's easier to sleep when the room is cooler, 65 degrees F or 18 degrees C. Our bodies need to drop in temperature to fall asleep and stay asleep. So drop the temperature in your bedroom a few degrees each night and keep screens out of the bedroom. I know, I know, I can hear you already, but I watch TV in bed or I read on my phone or my tablet at bedtime. But the artificial light that comes with these devices will interrupt our natural circadian rhythms. Our bedrooms should be for sleep and sex only. If you must read, read paper books. And also don't eat too close to bedtime. If our guts are busy digesting a bunch of food, our bodies will not be able to fall asleep. I have been doing intermittent fasting and I eat between 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. every day and this gives my gut a good two hours to do its work before I settle in for sleep. Would you like to see a video on the benefits of intermittent fasting? Let me know in the comments below. Next, start to wind down after dinner. Give your body signals that the end of the day is coming to help it get ready to sleep. Turn off the lights in your house that aren't needed after dinner. Do a bit of meditation to help calm the mind and let go of the details of the day. And don't go to the gym or work out right before bed. Bonus tip, if you find you're not able to fall asleep or wake up and then can't get back to sleep, get up and leave the bedroom. Do something else in another room until you feel sleepy. This will reinforce to your body that the bedroom is a place to be asleep, not a place to be awake. The question of the day is, do you get enough sleep? Are there habits that you can work on to improve your sleep? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you for joining me today. Please do me a favor of liking this video and hitting the subscribe button. The purpose of these videos is to help people with MS and other chronic illnesses. And doing these two things will tell the YouTube algorithm to show this channel and its content to others. Thanks. Until next time, be well.